I am going to read one poem that I wrote for this event, and it came about um, inspired by a conversation I had about two years ago, and also I was thinking about resist, resisting, and how police are in the enforcers, and how for someone like me to resist police is a luxury, and for people who do uh, not look like me, it can be life-threatening. And so um, this is about a conversation with my friend Alex. Visiting her home state of North Carolina, I sat with Alex in an outdoor cafe, her with coffee and me with tea. Because of the news, my concerns, I timidly ask her how she is doing it. How does she live with a fear of what might befall the two black boys she is raising? All the men in my life are older, have outlived mostly when others, especially the police, would find them men of malice or threat. Alice, Alex has said she's warned them, told them, you do everything the cops say, don't resist. Your job is to stay alive, don't die. Your job is to stay alive. How many years will these young men hold that career position? Their employment in the staying alive business breaks child labor laws, require working over 40 hours a week, on call at all times. My first job was teaching cotillion, instructing suburban kids how to shake hands, chew gum with their mouths closed, <laughs> dance the foxtrot Charleston, and sit politely in a chair. Cotillion was never on my resume. <laughs> And I'm doubtful those dance steps are even used by those students today. Your job is to stay alive. I don't fault Alex. I want her children to succeed in this employment of keeping their heart beating, of breathing. I met the young boys once, know very little, and yet love them by extension to her. She doesn't have an answer to how she's coping. The waiter refills her coffee, and the subject changes to other topics of the living.